Another assumption of the normal errors regression model is that the variance of the residuals, that is the variance of the E sub i's, is homogeneous across the range of the model. Uh, now in this multiple regression context, we have several different ways to think about uh, the variance of these residuals. That is the variance related to the range of ages, the ranges of severity, and the ranges of anxiety. Now from earlier, we printed out this predicted satisfaction. And this is another thing we need to check whether the variance is equal across. Uh, that is, this predicted satisfaction score, of course, is what the model predicts for each individual. And what we don't want to find is that the model does very well at some parts of the prediction space, uh, but does poorly at others. That is, we want the model to be um, homogeneously erring, that is to um, be off on average as much across the entire range of the prediction. Now an easy way to visualize all of these relationships uh, is to go to Analyze, Fit Y by X, and to take uh, all the prediction variables, that is age, severity, and anxiety, as well as this predicted satisfaction and put them under the axis. And what we're going to do is plot all of those against the residual satisfaction, that is our residuals from the model. Now by using the fit y by x platform rather than fit model, what we're going to do, or uh, what we're going to receive when we run this, is get four separate plots, one for each variable plotted against residual satisfaction. Now the reason we're using fit y by x and not fit model is because using fit model JMP would fit for us a multiple regression using each of these predictors. And that's not what we want. We just want to look at the single bivariate relationship uh, between each of these factors and the response. So let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. Now notice again that for each of our predictors we have a separate graph. And what we're looking for here is any discernible systematic pattern uh, to the residuals across the range of each of these variables. And notice, if we scroll across here, uh, that for none of the variables does there appear to be any uh, very systematic relationship. The worst thing for us to find would be some sort of fan shape, uh, especially across the range of the predicted satisfaction. Now again, imagine what this is. This is the errors of the model, that is this person is the amount the model was off for this person, based on the predicted amount of satisfaction that person was predicted to have. So for each of these, we're looking at the error of the model across the space of the predicted satisfaction scores. And if the model uh, had unequal variance across this range, what that essentially would be saying is that for certain parts of the prediction space, that is for certain satisfaction scores, the model would be doing differently, that is would be performing differently, uh, than for other places across the satisfaction. Uh, and this would be, be not okay. What this would mean is that our model uh, had the ability to predict for some people but not for others. What we want to see is essentially what we have here, uh, an amorphous cloud. That is, the model is doing no better or no worse at any, cr uh, any point across the predicted satisfaction. Now for our prediction variables, we also of course want to make sure that our model is not doing any better or worse for the different ranges. Uh, often what will be the case if there are problems with unequal variance is that early on or for low values of a predictor, uh, the errors of the model will tend to be small if there are problems with this homogeneity of variance assumption. So if data are heteroscedastic, that is the variance is unequal, what you'll tend to find is that as age or severity or anxiety gets larger, or as whatever your variables are tend to get larger, the model tends to do worse. Uh, and this would be a typical fan pattern that you just would not want to see in this case. Now so far we've only talked about visual diagnostics for um, detecting whether we have heteroscedastic data, that is whether our assumptions of the equality of error variance are upheld. And for the most part, the visual diagnostics would be uh, satisfactory and probably the most useful for us uh, because they give us a quick way to investigate, um, really to see whether the errors are essentially random with respect to these variables. Now one way we can perform a little more uh, sophisticated or formal of a diagnostics is to perform a median split in our data and compare whether the variance uh, of the upper half is larger or smaller than the variance of the lower half. Now one way to do this, um, and of course we have to choose which variable to split on, uh, but one way to do this is to create a new column. I'm just going to create a new column here and call this median split. Uh, for predicted. 
and then go ahead and hit OK. And what I want to do with this column is to, for all cases that are uh, in the upper half of the prediction space, label it a 1, and for all cases in the lower half of the predicted satisfaction space, label it a 0. The first thing we need to do is find out where the median is for predicted satisfaction. Now the easy way to do this is just go to Analyze, Distribution, uh, put in predicted satisfaction as our Y column, and what we can do is look for the 50th quantile, 50th percent, uh, that is the median for our data set. And in this case it's 63. So what we're going to want for this column over here, for the median split column, is for all values above 63, we want it to label, we want it to be labeled one thing, and for all values below 63, labeled another. So to do this, we're going to use the formula feature. So I'm going to right click on the column here and go to formula. And what we're going to use is a conditionality rule. Now we're going to go to uh, conditional here. And we're going to use an if statement, that is we're going to use a statement that checks something in a different column and returns a value if it's true and a different value if it's false. So go ahead and click if, and now it's requesting for us an expression that is something that can return a true or false statement. So we're going to click now comparison, and we're going to do the A less than B, or A greater than B, depending on how we want to set this up. I'm going to set it up using A greater than B, and you'll see how this works. And what I'm going to do is say if, this is what the statement's reading here, if blank is greater than this, then return this. So we'll say if predicted satisfaction, the value for each row, that is, when it evaluates this, if it's greater than 63, then return a 1, else return a 0. And notice that what this statement will do then is for this new column, it'll set as a 1 the value in each cell if the predicted satisfaction score is above 63, otherwise it'll return a 0. And what this will effectively do for us is create a column on which we can split the data into the upper half and the lower half. Now notice, we didn't have to use predicted satisfaction here. We could have used uh, any of our columns, actually, um, to make this median split. Uh, using predicted satisfaction is an especially easy way in the context of a multiple regression, uh, because, of course, this captures really the entire space, uh, instead of using just the split based on age, severity, or anxiety alone. Uh, so this is probably a good way to at least start looking at your assumption of unequal variances formally, or sorry, your assumption of equal variances across the prediction range um, formally if you need some sort of test to back up a claim that your assumptions are valid. Alright, so once this is done, once you have this set up, go ahead and hit OK. And notice that this column now has zeros and ones that correspond to whether for that individual their predicted satisfaction is above the median or below the median. Now before we go any further, we need to make sure this column is set to the proper modeling type. That is, we need to make sure JMP knows that these ones and zeros simply represent categories. That is, if someone is above the median or below the median. So to do this, we can right click on the column, go to modeling type, and set it to nominal. And notice that over here, we have the setting also. It sets it to nominal in all places. And what that does again is just make sure that JMP knows that this column only represents a classification. That is, if somebody is above the median or below the median. Now let's not forget why we were doing this. What we're trying to do is a formal test of whether the residuals have different variances across the range of the prediction. So what we're going to do is go to Analyze, Fit Y by X, and we're going to use as our factor this new median split for the predicted. And the reason we're going to do this is that what we can do is investigate whether the variances are equal for the lower half and the upper half. So for our Y response, we're going to give residual satisfaction, since that's the thing that is capturing for us the variance of the residuals. And notice that uh, one way comes up here, uh, instead of bivariate as we've seen before, uh, because we're fitting now a nominal factor against a continuous. So that would be typically a one-way type of analysis. Okay, go ahead and hit OK. And notice what's plotted here is the residuals grouped in people below the median or for people above the median. Now, what we're not doing is telling whether the means are different. We actually don't care if the means of these groups are different. Uh, what we do want to know about is whether the variances of these groups are any different. That is, if the residuals have a different variance for people below the median or for above. So if we go to the drop-down here, 
There's a setting, unequal variances, which will perform a set of tests, uh, several different ones, testing whether the variance is the same for these particular groups. So selecting those, notice that a number of tests are printed out here, and we have the O'Briens, the Brown Forsyth, Levine, Bartlett's, and the F-Test two-sided. Uh, the one that our book describes is the Brown Forsyth, uh, which tests whether the median absolute deviations to the median residual uh, differs in these two different groups, for those above the median and for those below. Uh, and notice that this test returns an f-ratio of 0 0.02, which is the test statistic for this test, and the p-value of 0.8773, comfortably non-significant. Now what this indicates to us is that we don't have any evidence that in the population the variance of the residuals is any different for those above the median in predicted satisfaction uh, than for those below the median in predicted satisfaction. And this is exactly what we want. Uh, so given this particular analysis and our visual diagnostics, uh, we've upheld, at least our, so far, our assumption of equal variances across really our prediction space.